All right, so I'm Ali Hassan. I'm here with Trevor Kodup and working with Darren Lamb and Rory Mills on Erasable Ink for Inkjet Printers. Together we form group number eight and our consultant is Dr. Dr. Zhao. And so the motivation behind our idea is that we saw a problem. In homes and offices these days, there's an incredible amount of wasted paper. Whether you print a document and use it just once and then throw it out, or whether you print something, see a small typo, and then just print it again in its entirety, a lot of the documents we end up printing end up in the trash. And we keep printing. And so we've asked ourselves, how can we use less paper for printing? And the approach we've taken is to develop an erasable printer ink. And the idea is that this erasable printer ink could work with any standard consumer inkjet printer, and that this would allow for the printability of erasable ink. So how it works is you would have normal paper fed through your printer, and then you would print documents like normal. And then when you're done with a document, or when you see a typo, you can take that document and heat it, either locally or in its entirety, and this would make the ink go clear. And then once that sheet of paper goes clear, you can feed it back into the printer, and then the cycle continues. And so the basis of our design is the thermochromic property. Thermochromism exists in many different products on the market already, and it's the ability of a color to change in the presence of heat. A common example is Leuco dyes, and we actually use one kind of Leuco dye in our design. Most thermochromic products on the market today are reversible, meaning that the color comes back after the heat source is removed. And the color is also very dependent on the dye developer system, so this was a key part of our design. There are, however, some technologies that use irreversible color change for the same purpose. One of them is a polished friction pen, which uses a thermochromic gel that can erase with friction on the cap tip. Or a Toshiba eStudio. This is a custom printer that prints with a custom toner that allows for erasable printer documents. But our vision is that the ink would work with any consumer inkjet printer, and that doesn't need a specialized printer for it to print documents. And so before we get into measuring color, it's important to know what color is and how we can measure that change. So the way we do it is we represent any color by this LAB uh, color scheme. So essentially, the ink will have one LAB coordinate, and the paper will have another LAB coordinate, and then the difference in between them is a delta E. So the higher the delta E, the more visible and vibrant the ink, and the lower the delta E, the more invisible the ink. So this will become an important metric in measuring our color change. And it's defined that a delta E of less than one indicates two colors that are indistinguishable by the human eye. So if your ink and the paper next to it have a delta E between them of less than one, then that ink has gone clear. And finally, a quick note on inkjets themselves. So today, in household inkjet printers, the most common technology is drop on demand. So meaning that drops only come out where you need them and not continuously. They come in two kinds, thermal and piezoelectric. Piezoelectric is by far the most common commercially. It's also common in household printers, like Brother printers and Epson printers. They all use capillary action to bring the ink from the cartridge to the nozzle. And then when it's at the nozzle, a piezoelectric piece actuates, and this pushes a small piece of ink out and onto the paper below. Inks tend to be aqueous, so they're water-based, and either have a pigment or a dye as the color provider. Pigments tend to be a suspension, while dyes tend to be a solution. And today, most inks are dye-based. So with that, we can go into defining our custom requirements. So in order for our ink to work properly, we've outlined the following custom requirements. First and foremost, the ink must change from a colored state to a clear state permanently upon heating. This ink should also be compatible with a standard ink chip printer to allow printing. And the ink should be durable and withstand everyday user conditions, such as temperature and abrasion with adjacent paper. The time required for the, the color transition to clear should also be convenient for the use to. We further specified these custom requirements into functional specifications and quantified them. So first, the ink must transition from opaque, opaque to clear at a high enough temperature, so temperature greater than 60 degrees Celsius, that isn't exposed to regularly in the environment. The, color, or the clear state of this ink should be in, indistinguishable to the human eye or have a delta E less than one with the adjacent paper at equilibrium. And the colored state of our ink should be clearly visible on the paper, so a delta E of greater than 10 with this paper. To allow for printing, the viscosity and surface tension should be tuned within 10% of the existing branded ink 
and particles in the ink should be less than seven micrometers to not clog the printer. <clears throat> Additionally, the ink should not fade at typical user conditions, so temperatures less than 40 degrees Celsius, and it should not smudge with contact uh, with adjacent paper. <clears throat> Uh, finally, the transition from colored to clear state should be convenient, so less than 30 minutes was set as a threshold. And so, with our customer specifications defined, we can move on to the design. We split the design into two main components, the chromism, which is the color change, and the printability, so actually taking our ink and printing it from an inkjet printer. I'll first talk about the chromism. So for the chromism, it's very dependent on our dye system. So this is how our ink works. We have a three-part dye system of dye, developer, and solvent that is dissolved in a carrier solvent. In our case, the carrier solvent is a mixture of ethanol and isopropanol. And this allows the ink to be liquid and to print from the printer. And the dye system together is what enables the color and the color change. This is how it works. So the moment it lands on the paper, the carrier solvent, the ethanol, evaporates away. And we're left with this three-part dye system of solids on the paper. Initially, they have a very visible color. When you heat it up, the solvent, the one octadecanol, melts, and this allows the dye and developer to come together. The developer is a nitrobenzoic acid, and the dye is a crystal vial lactone, and this interaction causes a ring opening, which changes from a colored state to a clear state. And then, depending on the developer of choice, when you cool the system, it can remain in this clear state. And so, as I had mentioned, the developer is one of the key items behind the color change process. So depending on choice of developer, it'll govern whether it's a reversible reaction or whether it's an irreversible reaction, so a permanent color change. And we're obviously looking for a permanent color change. So we investigated two different developers, 3 benzoic acid and phenolphthalein. As you can see, they both start out initially very vibrant with high delta E's. This indicates a very visible ink on the paper. When you heat it up, both quickly drop off to their clear state. And this is our color transition. However, the difference appears afterwards. In the case of phenolphthalein, the ink quickly jumps back up to its initial color, and this is a reversible color change. So it would not work for erasing. Our ideal choice would be 3 nitrobenzoic acid. And we can see here that even after taking away the hot plate and it cools at room temperature, it remains clear. And after we had a developer decided, we moved on to the ratio. So how much developer do we need per dye? And we found that as you increase the amount of developer, you get a more vibrant color on the paper initially. However, at some point, you also get a more visible erased color. So we optimized this by picking the largest possible color transition. And we found that to be at a ratio of 1 to 15 in terms of mass. And lastly, on chromism, we also investigated the use of water as one of the carrier solvents. So as I had mentioned earlier, most inks on the market today are water-based. But the presence of water in our ink causes a side reaction with the CVL, causing premature ring opening. And this would lead to the formation of color on the solution and then take away the color on the paper. So if you have water in the ink and you print it, it would appear clear before you erased it. This is obviously undesired. And so for that reason, water was omitted from the ink composition. So in summary here, we have 3 benzoic acid as a developer. We found an ideal ratio of 15 to 1. And the exclusion of water is essential to avoid that side reaction. And now moving on to the printability. So we have two main properties at our disposal to uh, achieve printability, viscosity and surface tension. So the idea is we want to tune our ink's viscosity and surface tension to match that of uh, existing branded inks to achieve printability. The viscosity was measured using an Hublot viscometer, and the surface tension was measured using both pendant drop droplet analysis and the capillary rise method. First, we tackled viscosity. So we measured the viscosity of our branded cyan ink and tuned the viscosity of our own ink using a viscous agent, ethylene glycol, and achieved uh, roughly the same viscosity. With the viscosity matched, we moved on to measuring surface tension. <clears throat> As you can see, the surface tension of both our ink and the um, uh, branded inks are significantly less than that of water. This indicates the use of a surfactant in the uh, branded inks. As our inks surface tension was relatively close to that of the branded inks, uh, it was assumed that a surfactant would not be needed to achieve printing. 
And so with the design done, we can move on to the results. So we similarly split it up into two components, our ink and the printing. So our ink, that's how it looks. It's very vibrantly blue. And then when we put a drop of this ink on the paper, we get that same blue color initially at room temperature. Once you heat it, the ink goes to clear. And then once you stop heating it, it stays clear. And what we did to quantify this is we took a video and analyzed every frame with MATLAB and measured the delta E of our ink dot next to the reference white paper. So initially we have a high delta E of around 11. That's our visible state. The moment the heating begins, it quickly drops off to a delta E of three, and that's our clear state. The whole transition happens in a matter of seconds, and then that we got a permanent cleared erased ink. It's also worth noting that our initial ink color is above the functional specification for color visibility, but our final ink state is above the color specification for invisibility. So meaning that while we do go clear, we don't go as clear as we would like, and there is some work to be done there. And because our transition time all happens in less than one minute, we're well below the functional specification of 30 minutes for the color transition. We also tested ink durability. So what we did is that we took a few samples and we heated them up to 60 degrees Celsius to see would they fade on a hot summer day, for example. And at least for the short term, we see that there's no significant degradation in the ink color when you heat it up to low temperatures. And so with the ink established, we tried printing it. So we put our designed ink in the cartridges of the inkjet printer, and we successfully achieved printing. On the left, you'll see uh, a sample text of 14 size uh, font text, indicating that our ink could be used in typical text documents and reused. On the right, you'll see a before and after of our ink uh, on paper and then heated. Um, it should be noted that ethylene glycol was omitted in the final design of our ink due to a, an undesired um, thermochromic limiting of the, um, of the ink. So basically the, the transition with ethylene glycol was, uh, or the color transition was less prominent with the inclusion of ethylene glycol. And if we go back to our custom requirements, we see that all of them were met with the, uh, the slight exception of the, the clear state being not as clear as previously desired. If we uh, go on to our functional specs, we see that the, the delta E of the colorless state was three, whereas we were looking for what, a delta E that is indistinguishable to the human eye of a delta E less than one. All of the other functional specifications were achieved. And then a quick look at our budget. We were allocated $1,400 in funds. We came out under budget with about $1,240 spent. So, and this is good for our project, but looking in the big picture, we thought about how can we take our ink beyond just a project. So we believe that our ink is highly desirable to potential investors. With its cost of materials being only uh, 1.3 cents per milliliter, it could be um, licensed to common or previously established printer companies or third party ink uh, companies as well. <clears throat> um, the all chemicals in the ink are proven to be safe and pose no environmental impact. And the synthesis of the ink is also very easy in a one pot solution, indicating that this um, ink could be batch fabricated and distributed. <clears throat> As I said, um, the ink poses no safety uh, risks or environmental impact, so it should be treated as regular, um, any other regular printer ink. One final consideration is uh, our ink's use in binding contracts or um, kind of legal documents. Generally, its use should be disclosed by users and common courtesy should be upheld. So in conclusion, we've developed uh, ink that can successfully transition from a colored state to a clear state permanently with applied heat in well less than a minute. We've shown that you can print this ink from any standard household inkjet printer. In our case, we use a brother inkjet printer. And finally, we've shown that under typical user conditions and temperatures up to 60 degrees Celsius, there would be no degradation in the ink color. But looking forward, we can have some next steps. So in order to improve upon our current ink design, uh, our ink can be tuned to work in other printers, not just the brother inkjet printer that we tested it with to allow uh, licensing to multiple different companies. 
Uh, other colors can also be developed besides blue to allow printing of more complex documents. And uh, the use of a, um, a, um, another viscous agent that's compatible, more compatible with our ink to allow uh, uh, a full thermochromic effect should be investigated. And the color degradation over time should also be investigated as well. Finally, um, the limits of reprintability of our erasable ink should be further tested. So with that, we'd like to thank our consultant, Dr. Zhao, and Jen Coggin for lab acts and logistics. We also like to thank Dr. Mario Gauthier and Dr. Mario Sinandes for providing various tools to allow us to measure ink's properties.